We are ready now to listen to the words of the Holy Gospel, the good news of Jesus. Please join us in the Gospel acclamation. <clears throat> Jacob's well. The hour was about noon when a Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone off to the town to buy provisions. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew. How can you ask me, a Samaritan and a woman, for a drink? Recall that Jews have nothing to do with Samaritans. Jesus replied, If only you recognize God's gift, and who it is that is asking you for a drink, you would have asked him instead, and he would have given you living water. Sir, sir, you do not, have, do not even have a bucket, and this well is deep. Where do you expect to get this flowing water? Surely you do not pretend to be greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it with his sons and his flocks. Jesus replied, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks this water, the water I give him, will never be thirsty. No, the water I give shall become a fountain within him, leaping up to provide eternal life. The woman said to him, Give me this water, sir, so that I shall not grow thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He said to her, Go and call your husband and then come back here. I have no husband. You are right in saying you have no husband, Jesus explained. The fact is, you have had five, and the man you are living with now is not your husband. What you said is true. Sir, I can see you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you people claim that Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship God. Jesus told her, Believe me, woman, an hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand, while we understand what we worship. After all, salvation is from the Jews. Yet an hour is coming and is already here, when authentic worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Indeed, it is just such worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know there is a Messiah coming. This term means anointed. When he comes, he will tell us everything. I who speak to you am he. His disciples, returning at this point, were surprised that Jesus was speaking with a woman. No one put a question, however, such as, What do you want of him? Or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water jar and went off into the town. She said to the people, Come and see someone who told me everything I ever did. Could this not be the Messiah? At that, they set out from the town to meet him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he told them, I have food to eat, of which you do not know. At this, the disciples said to one another, Do you suppose that someone has brought him something to eat? Jesus explained to them, Doing the will of him who sent me, 
and bringing his work to completion is my food. Do you not have a saying, four months more and it will be harvest? Listen to what I say. Open your eyes and see. The fields are shining for harvest. The reaper already collects his wages and gather a, 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 a yield of eternal life. That sower and reaper may rejoice together. Here we have a saying verified. One person sows, another reaps. I send you to reap what you had not worked for. Others have done the labor, but you have come into their gain. Many Samaritans from the town believed in him on the strength of the woman's word of testimony. He told me everything I ever did. The result was that when these Samaritans came to him, they begged him to stay with, with them a little while. So he stayed there two days, and through his own spoken word, many more came to faith. As they told the woman, no longer does our faith depend on your story. We have heard for ourselves, and we know that this really is the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we listen to the very familiar story of the woman at the well. Jesus goes to the well, I suppose because he's thirsty, he wants something to drink. And he meets, the Gospel says, a Samaritan woman. No name, just a woman who happens to be Samaritan. There are many lessons in this story for all of us. Jesus asks this woman about herself, but he tells her about herself without even waiting for her to answer. And she is shocked. She's taken aback because she doesn't know him at all. But he seems to know just about everything about her. What an unnerving experience. And then Jesus asks her for a drink. And she offers it to him. And he said, this water is good, but I have a different kind of water. I have a living water. And when you drink this water, you will never, ever be thirsty again. Can you imagine? One cup of water, and you're never thirsty again. And so what we have in this story is the physically thirsty Jesus meeting the spiritually thirsty Samaritan woman. And Jesus doesn't judge her for having five husbands and living with a sixth. On the contrary, he offers her acceptance, something that we all crave in our life, don't we? He offers her mercy and compassion. What a great lesson for all of us. Many of us jump to conclusions very quickly and make a judgment on people because of how they look or because of what we hear is their reputation. Jesus is not concerned here about what other people are thinking about this woman. Here is a woman that no one got, as we would say today. No one seemed to care about her. No one thought that she was worth very much at all. To be blunt, Probably no one cared if she lived or died. And then there was Jesus, whose heart exploded with compassion and mercy, offering her living waters. Living waters. Let's think for a moment about water. Water is absolutely essential for our living. Did you know? that 70% of your body is made up of water. So the next time someone says, oh, you're a big bag of wind, you say, no, I'm a big bag of water. <laughs> water. It's been proven that people, human beings, can go for 30 days or so without food, but only four or five days without water. We need 
water to live. So, what is this living water that Jesus is talking about? What kind of water could we search for such that when we drink it, we will never have to drink again? We will never be thirsty again. What we're talking here about is the living water of compassion and understanding that Jesus offered this Samaritan woman and offers to us as well. This water of compassion flowed over the heart and soul of the Samaritan woman and he offers us that opportunity as well. This living water is his very spirit, the spirit of God, God's energy, God's wisdom, the spirit of God that dwells right in our own hearts. If we are open to the Lord dwelling in our hearts, that's always the key. As we've said so many times, God doesn't force himself on anyone. He waits for us to open our arms in the doors of our heart to welcome him. These are the living waters without which we will die. We will spiritually die. So how do we come in contact with these living waters? We experience those living waters first when we are baptized and when the waters of baptism wash over our souls introducing us to an entire life lived in Christ. And throughout our lives, we have so many opportunities to encounter the Lord Jesus if our eyes are open, if our ears are open to the scriptures that we hear, if we are open to gathering as we have this afternoon to worship together, if we listen to the gospel and respond by serving one another. This is how we access the living waters of Jesus, the waters of his spirit living and acting within us. Jesus becomes very personal with this Samaritan woman. And remember, the gospel reading said, the Jews didn't even speak to Samaritans, much less a woman. My gosh, think about it. But here is Jesus walking over those man-made laws and reaching out, trying to understand this woman, to offer her compassion. I don't know if you've ever seen the Mercedes-Benz commercial, but Mercedes-Benz has the most structurally sound car. They make the most structurally sound car by way of safety. And in the commercial, the uh, car goes at a very fast rate into a concrete wall. And the frame is still intact. And the Mercedes-Benz company have a very strict patent. It's, it's airtight on this particular structure. However, almost every car company in the world bases their structure on the Mercedes-Benz structure. And one time, a German engineer that works for Mercedes-Benz was asked by a reporter, if your patent is so airtight, why do you allow other companies to borrow it? And the German engineer smiled and he said, in this life, some things are just too important not to share. Wonderful for us to think about because those of us who profess to be Christians believe the very same thinking. We believe that the good news of Jesus is just too important not to share. And in fact, after the waters of baptism, these living waters washed over us, it became our increasing responsibility to share that good news of Jesus by everything we say and everything we do. So ask yourself, are you interested in these living waters? 
Do you need these living waters of God's Spirit working within you? Do you have a desire for them? And if you do, pray. Ask the Lord Jesus to send you those living waters anytime, any place, anywhere. Because without them, you perish.